hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here among all the talented minds at SIGGRAPH. Uh, in my presentation, I will introduce a technique for applying stylistic modification to select poses in character animation and extending these effects to unchanged animation data. We call this solution ECHO. All the solutions presented here are prototypes and are not used in production. A little bit about me. My name is Mehdi Farokhtala. I started my career at Polygon Pictures, working on various TV shows and movies as a character rigger, writing animation and rigging tools. Then I moved to Massive Entertainment, and I went through the entire development cycle of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, where I learned more about the real-time animation challenges, like uh, slope adjustments for full-body IK and procedural animation. And then I joined Activision last year to be part of the central animation tech team to work on forward-looking solutions for animations in game. There's something that makes my attendance at SIGGRAPH much more exciting personally for me, and that's my return after more than a decade since SIGGRAPH Asia in Hong Kong in 2011, where I participated back then with my, as a student as with a short film we developed together with my peers. Here's a summary of the content I'll go through today. Uh, I will be available for questions after the presentation, but due to time constraints, you can still find me throughout the conference. We've been working on a solution called ECHO that allows for interconnected pose modification that results in stylized animation. It is a highly adaptable and effective way for modifying animation content. It allows for creative control, <coughs> consistency, and expressiveness for animators and artists. We aim for consistent style across different styles works and fo focusing on key elements such as fixed character traits like femininity and changing stats like health or fatigue, along with world interactions like uneven train or object interactions like chair or covers. Just like how actors get to stylize emotion and add their trait into emotion capture data, animators would like to have to the creative control to add flavor to the animation. The main goal is to make animators as happy as we can by giving them more artistic control. But what is animation stylization in game development? For the purpose of this talk, we define animation stylization as application of artistic techniques to create animation that deviate from realistic representation and to convey a particular visual theme, personality, or emotion. It demonstrates the diversity and creativity possible with the animation. Animation stylization is a spectrum from realistic to stylized. On the realistic spectrum, animation is typically generated using motion capture data, but there is still good reason to stylize the mocap data when there isn't enough captured data from a famous actor to consistently present their traits in a game. We must use the existing animation database to replicate their motion. You may take a motion capture data and make it more heroic with some subtle modifications. The more you push uh, the more you push the stylization of motion capture data, the more you move towards the middle of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, animations tend to be more hand animated. This is where stylization is used to convey different personalities or character traits, or other cases where a simple walk cycle could be modified to differentiate various character classes within a game. Currently, there are ways to adjust animation data to fit different styles, for example, additive layers in both DCC packages or inside animation state machines in real time. Artists would play around with various animation curves and they would require post-to-post -post transitions correctly, which are time consuming and prone to errors. Every animator has a different style of animation and the real time footprint on memory of such changes could be substantial. It's important to emphasize that the common methods for adding style usually apply to all data equally. Therefore, careful tagging of metadata is needed to ensure these effects only apply where the artist want them to. After speaking with game teams, it was not surprising to us that we found stylization to be costly processing in terms of man hours and the real-time footprint on memory. So to remedy that, I'll go over what we have been working on to offer as a solution called ECHO. The foundational concept is recognizing that each pose in an animation sequence is interconnected. This means a change in one pose can ripple through and affect other poses, like how moving one part of a fabric can affect its entire shape. This approach reduces the amount of data needed and makes it easier to experiment and make the changes quickly. With ECHO, animators would have the artistic control to create desired styles across the animation database. 
Let's take a simple walk cycle, for example. You would be sampling these into principal dynamic poses, or PDPs. The top animation here is the original untouched mocap data. It is important to clarify that PDPs are calculated and sampled before you can begin reusing ECHO. Alex Presnag already did uh, dive into what principal dynamic poses are in his presentation called Hyperpose, so I won't be doing that here. In our case here, you can see the modified pose with the right foot forward here. And then if you look at the bottom, you can see the similar poses influenced by modifications carry the same similarities here. And then there are also other poses with less similarities to the modified pose. Therefore, they don't receive the modifications 100% here. PDPs are select key poses that summarize an entire motion, making animation compact and easy to manage. Now, if you were to look at the same box cycle, there are many similarities in poses. Therefore, depending on the complexity of your target animation style, you might require to modify a different number of poses. For the very simple modifications I've done here, we found seven PDPs to modify. And you might wonder why seven. I could have covered this with just three or four PDPs. However, to add some variations to the final stylized motion, it would be good to modify more. It creates a more natural motion. This image should help with demonstrating how manipulating PDPs propagate through timeline and influences other poses. If you look at the, po uh, the pose PDP in red color here, you can see how distribution of its weighted pose across the timeline below. Following the same logic, it becomes more visible how the rest of the modification could be propagated through timeline. Each PDP can have an influence over other PDPs, and it shows the sum of many different poses that were modified and how that could be on the animation timeline. And we are not just looking at one animation, it's all the similar poses in the entire animation database. Here's an image of the best PDPs sourced from the provided data included in the zipped ASM or animation state machine. This concise sequence effectively presents a large amount of information. It offers an efficient way to manage extensive data with a brief sequence. Artists can preserve their work, whether old or new, and easily integrate each stylized or modified change into the ASM as an additive layer, for example. Here's the formula that we are currently using for propagating the poses across the timeline based on an output of the cost function. It calculates the weights for each pose that were influenced by the modified poses and weighs the overall modification across all poses. Due to time constraint, I won't be diving into this, but we are currently looking into improving the performance and accuracy of the formula. Some PDPs are identified for their broad effect across various animation, making them ideal for stylization. Modifying the poses with such close similarities can be the key to creating consistent results across the data. The amount of modification would depend on the base animation as well. In a traditional workflow, expanding animation state machines can become increasingly complex, while ECHO simplifies this by allowing weight changes based on external input. Additionally, you can combine multiple echo modification layers without needing to generate more data. Unique poses that capture rare movements add diversity and detail to an animation. Modifying these poses can enhance the character's base motion, like adding gesture or hand or body movement enriches the animation with each turn of the character. The, the main thing to remember and consider here is the fact that animators would be going, will not be going over thousands of frames of animation. I went over the concept behind Echo. With that in mind, I developed the tool for animators in Autodesk Maya to prototype animations. The tool enables animators to adjust poses, producing consistent results across animation. Each PDP is interconnected, and the tool ensures the influence of each PDP produces a lifelike motion with fluid animation. It supports an iterative workflow that allows to test various styles quickly. Echo is also compatible with various other existing workflows, such as art-driven pose libraries. The point clouds shown here are reference points for each body part. We use these points, for, uh, positions, or orientations to maintain the modified parts relative to the rest of the body, ensuring smooth transitions and interpolations within each PDP. This aligns with the overall body-based motion in a non-destructive way using a method called body space transform, or BSD. With BSD, we determine how each body part should be positioned relative to the non-modified data and how they rotate relative to the modification. 
This is the formula for the BSP calculations. Uh, I won't again dive into it. We are currently looking into uh, its performance and accuracy. One thing that got our attention was the requirement on Call of Duty to capture various weapon types from mocap. <coughs> we quickly recognized this process to be very costly, both in terms of hours required for capturing mocap and the runtime impact on memory can be quite large. But we, be we believe Echo could be a potential solution to reduce both of these problems. Here's an example of a bow and arrow modification. I adjusted only seven poses for 1,200 frames of animation without worrying about transitions during character turns. This simple change affects all locomotions in data, which is incredible. In traditional methods, you would require precise timing for each transition, frame adjustments, and extensive man hours. And with Echo, it just took me 15 minutes, allowing you to sculpt the motion efficiently. These animations were like a creative exercise for me because animation is not an artistic style of mine. But by creatively modifying your base animation, you can create diverse animations for various games or animation environments. I only modified seven PDPs, letting our algorithm apply changes across the timeline. You can modify more and sample additional PDPs, but the goal is to avoid hand animating the entire motion over and over again. For a very simple walk cycle here, I only had to modify five PDPs. Quick iteration and consistent results enable users to produce quick animation variation for simple walk cycle. Echo could be seen as an advanced method for creating additive layers that would get the user quite far into the desired results. It takes care of the complex post-to-post -post transitions that would otherwise be very time consuming to achieve. Here's another case with an animation from a mocap with a chair. Now let's look at the few scenarios. If the chair size changes, or our character mesh is bulkier than the original mocap actor, or the chair have long arms. With the current methods to make such adjustments, it would require a lengthy process of determining all the various transitions and contacts with the chair. Then that's time consuming and possibly only applicable to this animation, whereas Echo, the modifications would be applied to all similar poses across the database. Such as using Echo's modification could also be used for a bench. This would ensure the data does not grow with every adjustment. Here's the fast forwarded video demonstrating the issue with the chair height adjustment and the workflow in Maya. Once we have identified the changes we want to make, we can begin the iterative process using the tool in Maya. The tool would mark the PDPs in Maya's timeline and places them in the UI by ordering them according to the each PDP's overall influence. This means the top PDPs would have the highest influence on the timeline if they were to be modified. And this is what the result would compare to the base mocap data we had. This was achieved with modifying four PDPs that took about five minutes of my time. And you can continue iterating on this to fine tune it even further. Echo has numerous other potential applications. Each modified pose weight could trigger various commotions, such as wing flap, delay such triggers before and after the PDP, or trigger shaders to create footprints on muddy road, adjusting the depth based on the PDP's weights to reflect whether a character is stomping or simply walking. And then animators can modify base animations like walk cycles and applying these changes across the database. These modifications stored as recipes are easier to manage than large ML models and can be updated and blended offline or online. Adjusting recipes is more efficient than redoing data or retraining models. Now I'll discuss a few challenges we've identified and future roadmap for Echo. Echo's Maya tool arranges PDPs based on their influence on the data than sequentially. This scatter highly influence, influential PDPs across the timeline, making it hard to determine a character's position or action, such as sitting or standing. So we came up with a sequential artistic frame where we are condensing the PDPs at a certain section of the timeline and animators can uh, scrub through the timeline and work with their traditional methods. And then we can bring back their modifications to the original place on the timeline where the PDPs are supposed to be. Timing of each PDP is something we are currently looking into as a challenge. Timing is an integral part of animation stylization. Our method is not able to do that just yet. To make an orc footstep look heavier, you would need to adjust the timing. Content ever scaling or time warping could be ways to tackle this that we will be looking at in the future. 
Food sliding seems to be another issue that particularly present in Maya, but we believe the best place to have such changes is in engine, since there are other factors in play, like environments, gameplay inputs, or AI input. You can utilize a full body AK system for foot pinning and other contact placements. And you can see an example with the character transformation here, but how uh, IK could help with foot pinning and in, in foot pinning in engine as character transforms. One part of the animation pipeline that we was not covered is facial animation. Echo may be potentially utilized for facial animation. However, it requires a tagging system for features velocity or positions due, due to its fluid, context-dependent nature, and subtle movement. This is a bigger subject matter that requires much more analysis that we hope to tackle in the future. We developed this tool as a, in Maya as a proof of concept to demonstrate the tech, but we believe the best place to utilize the tech is in engine. We envision Echo working together with other technologies for contact and context management, such as footscape scaling, prop variation, world interactions, inverse kinematics, and physics, which is a tech we're currently working on called ADAPT. Echo and ADAPT are meant to complement each other and work together. We are hoping to showcase this sometime in the future. Here are some contact information for the central animation team at Activision and my own LinkedIn. With this now, I'll pass the mic back to Alex to continue with the Savant presentation. Thank you.